This setup right here is the FX6 and the audio handle is quite clearly not attached, but I am able to record audio and video with the FX6 here. It puts it on the same file, so there's no syncing required in the edit, in post. You can just start editing the video from the FX6, the audio from another means, which we'll talk about in a second, and it's it's ready to go. And I'm amazed no one else has come up with this solution yet. This video is sponsored by the Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 34,000 photographers and find equipment insurance, education, and business tools made specifically for small business owners like you. So you know the FX6 doesn't have any additional audio inputs other than a little scratch mic on the side just here when the top handle is taken off. It made it to Times Square. Has the built-in audio on that. But if you add a Ninja 5 to the top of it, on the side of the Ninja 5, you actually have a 3.5 mil input. And with the Ninja 5, you can actually select what audio track you want it to record with the video feed that's coming in via the HDMI. So if we go into the Ninja 5 menus and you go across to the audio tab, you'll see that right here, that, as I scratch it, just there, that's the scratch mic, which is coming in via HDMI. So that's my audio that's recorded from the FX6. It's the only thing we have without that top handle on there. But if we turn on the DJI mic, which I actually have connected via the 3.5 mil on the side just here, that's gonna pair up. And now you'll see I have levels for the DJI mic as I talk. So now that means when I hit record on the FX6, it's recording the video from the FX6, but the audio from my DJI mic by means of the 3.5 mil jack. So live example for you, hit record on the FX6. The audio is coming from my DJI mic going into the Ninja. Video is coming from the FX6 and this is how it looks. No idea how the exposure is gonna be because I think the settings on the FX6 are wrong but it's purely an example to show you how it works and how well it actually does work. Now you'll also have noticed that if I hit record on the FX6, it records on the Ninja 5, and that's called a trigger record, which is a function that the Ninja 5 actually has built within it. If you go into the settings right here and you go to input, this little setting right here where it says trigger time code on, source trigger, that's what you need to have on. If you turn this off, hit record, it doesn't record. But if I turn this on and then hit record, it now records, if I hit record again, it stops recording. So it sends a signal to the Ninja 5 to make sure that it is recording when the FX6 is recording, which means I can use the camera exactly how I want it to be used. Now you do also need to enable something within the menus, which I'll show you right now. If you click on the full menu button on the side and hold it, and then go down to timecode media, HDMI timecode out, make sure that is turned on. When that's turned on, when the settings I just showed you on the Ninja 5 are turned on, they'll both pair and work nicely together. And when you hit record on here, it'll record on the Ninja 5. Now, is this a perfect solution? No, it's definitely not. But I would say it's probably the best one out there to date in terms of a way to record audio without having to use the top handle on the FX6. The next best option compared to this would be to use something like the Tentacle Sync to have a timecode box and then record audio externally, FX6 video and then sync them up in post. You have to do the extra step with the time code syncing. Never personally used it, but I know that is a viable option for people as well. But this is a way to just get it all on one file. Using the Ninja 5, you get access to whatever functionality the Ninja 5 offers in terms of your codecs. You can record 4K 24, 30, 60 if you wanted to. You get ProRes, you get RAW if you want to shoot in RAW, H.265 if you want to pay that $99 activation fee on the Ninja 5, and you get 10-bit 422 as well. So this video is sponsored by PPA, the Professional Photographers of America. Odds are, if you have an FX6 and are watching this video, you probably shoot video professionally. Now you might have a newer business, but it also might be more established, and you know better than anyone else when you first started, there's things that are involved in running a photography and video business that you really didn't sign up to do. You very much rely on your gear and you need to make sure that that gear is protected in case something does happen. Now for a low monthly price, PPA will give you up to $15,000 of equipment insurance. So if something does happen to your gear, they'll actually give you a full replacement value for a $350 flat fee deductible. Or if you prefer, you can get it repaired and that is a $50 deductible. Now the biggest pain point for me when I first started was the contracts, the paperwork involved for whatever it is that you're shooting. You need contracts in place to protect you 
and your clients. And it can be quite daunting and very easy just to ignore that you need to have contracts in place because you don't know what to put in those contracts. But this is another benefit of being a member with PPA. They actually give you customizable, downloadable contract templates that you can cater directly to your business. Everything is always going swimmingly and you think everything's going well until it doesn't and something goes wrong. When you're working through a massive backlog and you just don't have the time to deal with it and you get caught off guard, extra stress, extra time, extra money, you don't wanna to have to deal with that. Set yourself and your business up now, protect it, make sure you don't have to worry about any of those things in the future. PPA is here to help you with all of these things. And if this sounds like something you're interested in, if you click on the link down below, you can learn a little bit more. And if you do decide you wanna sign up, there is a special discount code included when you click on that link too. Thank you PPA for sponsoring today's video. Now, technically speaking, you don't even need to have this monitor attached, which is probably a way that most people are going to use this setup. Depending on the length of your HDMI cable, using the little Mondo, clips there. Thank you, Armando, for sending those through. You could have this attached to a gimbal and as long as you have an HDMI cable on there and your microphone is plugged into this, however you want, the rigging options are pretty much endless depending on how you want to use it. This doesn't need to be attached to that. It's still going to record via the HDMI cable, in this case, Gerald's cables. Thank you, Gerald. As I said, this is by no means perfect and there are a few caveats to using this as a setup. It's only a 3.5 mil input, which means no XLR. You do need to use a mic that has some form of its own power. So for example, right now we're using the DJI wireless mic. It powers itself via means of a battery, so it works just fine. If I wanna use the Sennheiser AVX system, that also works fine, tested both of those. If you wanna use a powered mic like the uh, Sennheiser MKE 400 here, which has its own battery, 3.5 mil jack, that also works fine. But if you wanna use something like the Rode Video Micro because it has no battery built in, it doesn't work. If you wanna use the Deity D4 Duo, no battery, no power, does not work. In terms of the audio controls, you are limited by whatever the Ninja 5 has in terms of its audio controls. That's it, there's no other option. The other thing to think about with the Ninja 5, if you're using this setup is we don't have the FX6 monitor attached, which means when you're recording with the Ninja 5, everything you're seeing on the screen is being recorded, which means these menus, they're being recorded as well. Now there is an easy fix to this, just assign a custom button to basically turn the display on and off on the FX6. So I've assigned the S and Q1 button, the custom button one on the FX6 to do exactly that. So when I tap that, it turns the display on and off. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I'll show you right now. Go into the full menu again. Go to user and go down to assignable button, whatever one you want. I've used number one and then you're looking for display. So now when we tap one, you get the FX6 menus on there. You tap it again, turns the menus off. Now this means you could potentially run the risk of accidentally leaving that turned on when you're recording because you're so used to seeing all the FX6 menus when you use something like the little tiny FX6 screen. So that is something to bear in mind. Worst case scenario, if you did do something like that, you could use the original video from the FX6 and just sync it up with the audio that was recorded from this, if that happened. Another way around that would be to use the FX6's monitor and have the menus turned off when it's coming through HDMI. So you'll see the menus on here, which is good. And then this will just be a clean feed of whatever the FX6 is seeing. That makes this setup bigger. As I said, I know it's not perfect. I'm just trying to show you what is possible. What are the other cons with using this setup? Well, if you had a mic attached to this, however you want, however you want to rig this, the Ninja 5 is quite loud. It might pick up the fan noise. If you're using a wireless mic setup like I have going on right here for whatever you're recording, that's not going to be an issue. But if there's a mic attached to this via 3.5 mil, I mean, you probably wouldn't want to do that. You may as well just use the top handle if that's the case. But if you wanted to, for whatever reason, it could pick up that fan sound. The other big thing is the battery life on the Ninja 5 is pretty bad. No matter what size battery you use, it chews through them very, very fast, which starts to pose the question of, well, maybe you could rig it up and start using with V-mount batteries and get even more power. But then you got a bigger setup and arguably could you use the top handle then instead just to make everything a bit easier? Yeah, you definitely could. 
Again, just showing you what's possible. Now, if you're wondering about the setup that I have right here, this is actually the small rig, one of the small rig plates that they have for the FX6. I will put the part number on the screen here. I can't remember what it is. And I have it screwed directly into the top of the FX6 here, which is where the top handle would actually go. So there is no way to use this with that setup there. And then I have a little small rig uh, mount for the monitor here, which actually has on the bottom there, RE locating pins and it screws directly into that which also has holes for RE locating pins. So this is really like the most minimal setup you can possibly get with the FX6 to mount a monitor to the top of it. But as I said, you don't need to mount it if you don't want to. You're just limited by the length of your HDMI cable. That's it, really. I don't need to go any further. I don't need to show you anything else. If you want to record video from your FX6 without the top handle, all you need is a Ninja 5, the hard drive, HDMI cable, 3.5 mil cable, and whatever powered 3.5 mil input you want to use. That is all I've got for you in today's video. Hopefully this gives you some creative ideas. If you've been looking for a solution like this, you're welcome. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.